Hello, thriving friends. Happy new day. Happy new day to everybody. Welcome in the room. Come on and join us. It's a brand new day for thriving lessons with Dr. G. So you may be joining us from any of our platforms and I'm going to show you in a second. We are streaming live on Facebook, multiple pages. We are also on Foster Radio and TV right now. So please, wherever you are, you are very welcome. Thank you for those who are also joining from LinkedIn and we will be on YouTube at Thriving Generation with Dr. G. Take a moment to settle in. I'm also going to take a moment to check on the platforms just to make sure that we are live. You know, technology don't always have control. So uh -huh, we have to make sure that it's working. So in two seconds, okay, two seconds is too small. In 20 seconds, please go ahead and share the link with your friends, with your loved ones on all your platforms. Let people know that we are live. They can join us and let's have some thriving lessons together. Let's see. I don't see it live on any of the platforms. Hey, oh yeah, trouble don't come on. Let's see. All right, if you can hear me, just say hello. Okay, Isaac is here. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you for joining. Um, wherever you are, please go ahead. Like the video, share the video, let people join us. Oh, beautiful. Okay, it's reflecting now. Thank you so much, Facebook folks. So I can see Facebook, but if you're on LinkedIn, you cannot see Facebook. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the link and share with my people. Like we've started. Come on, join us in the room. Come on, join us in the room. Isaac, can you hear me okay? Wonderful. So we'll go ahead and get started. I am so excited about today. It's a beautiful day and we have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful lesson coming our way. We have started a new series. We are talking about financial literacy. It's about our financial wellness. It's about our health and well-being. We have learned in the past that being healthy is not just about the physical body. We need to be healthy in several dimensions of our lives. So we took our time to talk about holistic health and wellness. We explored the different dimensions, physical wellness, emotional wellness, occupational wellness, intellectual wellness, social wellness. And then what happened? We even talked about financial wellness, environmental wellness. So financial wellness is what we are exploring some more. And as thriving friends, we don't just want to work for many, many years of our lives and then at the end of the years we don't have anything to show for it so we are learning how to make money how to grow money and how to save money and then we have to spend too so remember me when we get there we have to spend all right beautiful thank you isaac so i will just go ahead and get started as we still wait for thriving friends to join on the various platforms we are talking about investment opportunities for beginners, some of the things we have to look out for. And I have a wonderful friend joining us. So if you have questions, you can post them ahead of time. I'm using one screen today, but I can go back and forth, I believe. Since I'm not the one talking, I won't get confused. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and invite our guest in today. Hi, Doc. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you perfectly. Thank you so, so, so much for making time for us today. Yeah. Nice. We want to be rich, so it's good you are here to teach us. <laughs> I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself to the Thriving Friends. We know that you are doing some awesome things out there, and we just don't want to limit you to one place, which is the um, Diaspora Careers and Investment, or we don't want to limit you to your profession, which is lecturing. So go ahead and introduce yourself however best you want the Thriving Friends to know you, and then we'll, go, we'll continue from there. Thank you very much for, you know, the opportunity to be on this, you know, platform to share with your thriving friends. Um, my name is Shadrach, um, Dr. Shadrach Dari, I mean, for official purposes. 
Um, I live in Scotland and, you know, been here for the past 10 years. But my real passion is to share, you know, information about financial literacy um, with friends in the diaspora, um, as well as even, you know, back home. So I run the Facebook, well, the Facebook and then the YouTube, you know, page known as Diaspora Careers and Investments. So as the name goes, where I share information about, you know, career advancements and, you know, investment opportunities. Because we've moved, you know, to our various countries, you know, we've moved from our various countries into the diaspora to, to thrive. So however best we can do that, you know, I share the little information that I know. And it's been a blessing to many people. And I guess, you know, it was through that I, I got to know about your channel. And so, you know, it's a pleasure to be here to share with, you know, everyone. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Yes, it's through that channel and you have a lot of great resources out there. I would encourage everybody to just check it out. Go to Facebook, just type in the Diaspora Careers and Investment. And I I first, I've heard of, you, you know, I was going to go deep and start talking about questions. I've heard of several investment opportunities, but it's in the broad online platform but sometimes hearing you explain some of these things and how they work for you it just blows my mind it simplifies that for me so i love your channel i Thank subscribe you. right away and i encourage everybody to please go ahead and check that out at some point we'll put the link also in the comments um if you have it you can go ahead and put it in as other friends join us all right so let's go ahead and get started doc so i wanted to Share this. Is there anything you want to say about the slide, dog? <laughs> well, I mean, I should have mentioned that, I mean, I, I originally trained as a nurse and mm -hmm. since from there, you know, moved on to do public health. So I have absolute no degree in finance whatsoever. So one could say that, you know, it's even misleading for anyone to try to, you know, get financial advice from me. So these disclaimers are to, you know, just to help us be on the same page that, I'm no expert in finance or, you know, license to give professional advice. But I believe that that is also why you want to listen to, you know, this conversation. Because I was often put off by, you know, comments by accountants, suits wearing, tie wearing, you know, speaking big grammar, you know. Um, so <laughs> these are things that, you know, I have learned, you know, and... And I think you mentioned it that my explanations are often from a lay perspective. So you don't need a degree in you know, accounting or whatever to understand what I say. But if somebody like Shadrach, a nurse, you know, 10 lecturer is able to, you know, understand investments and all of that, mm. then perhaps it's something that you, you know, uh, maybe your maths is even better than mine. You know, you can even, you know, also understand. So it is actually from that point of reference that I want us to have this conversation rather than, you know, Oh, I spoke to this expert. No, I'm not really an expert. You know, mm. um, I've learned and I've tried. And so these are things based on my experience, on what I have heard and known other people do. And whenever I'm, you know, if you ask me a question and I've not done it before, I'll tell you that I know somebody who's done it or I've heard of it. But if I've done it, then I'll let you know that this is something I do and I understand. So hopefully, you know, that is a good perspective to come from. Yeah. That would also bless your audience. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that because yes, listen, you are not the only one who gets turned off by <laughs> some of these things from um, investors. You like, what is your part in it? What are you going to get from it? Why are you telling me that? Mm, yeah, but when you can yeah. hear that other friends can also learn and thrive or improve, then you know Absolutely. that it's not so far from you. Absolutely. So let's just go ahead and get started. How long have you been exploring financial related information and have you been improving your own literacy? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> all right. Maybe this is not a platform to share this, but, um, like I said, I mean, I'm an ex. I really did not know much about finance and really did not care about it. But then moving into the West, you know, the UK to be precise, I realized that there's a vast disconnect between, you know, um, the financial environment we have okay. back in Ghana or even back home and then what is over here. And let me just fast forward the whole story. So I had to get interested in understanding the system. I went to a bank to go for a loan and... Okay. I was denied the loan and it didn't okay. make sense to me because I don't owe anybody. Okay. I have good savings. 
But then they told me I don't have good credit score. So it appeared that I needed to have some, you know, debt in order to demonstrate yeah, yeah. that I'm credit worthy. Uh, so that's how it got started. And I got interested in studying it. And I actually have absolutely enjoyed the journey, you know, because come to think of it, whether you were a plumber, a mason, a joiner, a, you know, a nurse, a professor, the only common thing we share in our salary is that we are all paid in currency, whether dollars, CDs, pounds, euros, whatever. Everybody is paid some currency. Yeah. As to how you manage that is what makes the difference between two professors, two carpenters, two joiners, two masons. So then it's obvious that even for two nurses, all things being the same, one can be wealthy than the other because of how they used their resources or how they managed their money. Being a Christian, I read a story also of the man, you know, the king who went on a journey and gave his, you know, his seven talents, mm -hmm. and some were able to multiply theirs, and some could not multiply theirs. And then he took the one who couldn't multiply theirs and then gave it to the one who could multiply theirs. Anyway, if you if you read the Bible <laughs> to that part, you would know that you know how you manage your resources, you know, yeah. actually plays a huge role and can make a huge difference. So. In short, hustling. It was just, you know, hustling. <laughs> hustling. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's great to learn, really. And I also grew up thinking that the best way to live is to know all oh, anybody. Just, you need something, pay for it and go. But to come to a new place where you need to owe, if you also mm -hmm. don't take care, you realize that you are owing all the time. It's always good to learn. Tell me about this slide. What is this? Oh, so this is meant to be my introduction slide. Before I actually came to this, I got a good email and I got another one about okay. somebody who said they want to invest billions of dollars. They want me to help, you know, help me invest billions of dollars mm. because apparently the second wife of Gaddafi, you know, uh, yeah. inherited yeah. some millions. <laughs> I like the sarcasm, which you're already demonstrating. And when people think of hear about investment, <laughs> often that is the first thing that comes to mind to their mind that it's a scam. You know, there is no truth to it because of these things that we often hear and often these emails that we get. So it is important that you decipher, you know, or or you know, be able to discern, you know, what is you know genuine from what is not. So yeah. obviously, this is you know a scam. You know, so. Uh, this is not the investment opportunity I'm going to share with you today. You know, I'll share with you how to understand, you know, some basic, you know, investments, things, and then how to get into it. Yeah. It is very, very interesting that uh, you brought this up. Please look out for somebody also tried to scam me, but through Zelle. You know, you wow. have to really, really watch out. Like they are looking, they are looking for people interested in some of these things and they will just use you up. Yeah. So who is this lovely guy on our screen? <laughs> this, this man is known as Warren Buffett. So those of you in the US would know him. You live close to him. Yeah. You know, you are <laughs> he's your next door neighbor. So Buffett is known. In fact, in the uh, in the the Forbes uh, richest men, richest people in the world, latest you know uh, the update. He is the fifth richest person at the moment. And Buffett has been rich for a very, very long time. He's actually Bill Gates' mentor, mm -hmm. um, and Buffett is a very known, you know, very known investor. So I guess when people think of investment, they are thinking of Buffett. But Buffett has got an investment background. He's got a business background. So yeah. I guess people could see why. But then show me the next slide where we show somebody who you would not think very much of when it comes to investment, good, yeah. uh, Shaquille O'Neal. But yeah. apart from being a great fan, uh, you know, basketball legend, he's also a great investor you know, who, who invested heavily in Google and has made a lot of money uh, mm. from it. So um, it shows, you know, it shows the, the, both in terms of ethnicities, you know, that investing is not just for the coat-wearing white Caucasian man, yeah. but it's also for all, you know, you know, educated to the perfect level. But even for a basketball fan, you know, legend, you know, like Shaquille O'Neal, you know, black guy, bald head, you know, so relatively younger. So yeah. it's just the divide, you know, that it ranges from, you know, from Shaquille O'Neal 
to to Warren Buffett from yeah. Shadrach, you know, from Shadrach to Dr. G, you know, that, yeah. that Tell them, <laughs> tell them, we are coming <laughs> Uh, it's funny you brush uh, Shaq up. I heard that somebody approached him many, many years ago to start Starbucks in oh, dear, the yeah, area. Yeah. He was like, oh, black people don't drink Starbucks. And yeah, he yeah. has that opportunity and now he regrets so much. Yeah, because yeah. I am almost always at Starbucks, not necessarily for the drinks, but for the space. It's one space mm -hmm. you can go and sit and get work done. Nobody will disturb you. Nobody will approach mm -hmm. you. It's such a welcoming space. Hey, I'm doing adverts for Starbucks. But it's true. <laughs> I've yeah, been yeah. using Starbucks spaces for many, many years since I came to the United States like 10 years ago through school. That is the one place outside of the library that I know I can go and sit. So at least when you go, you buy something, right, to sit. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yes, Black people drink Starbucks. So Sorry, mm. Shaq. Anyway, don't take us through some of the investment opportunities for beginners. Some of us are listening to you. We don't know where to start from. Can you help us out? Yeah. So I guess the idea is what then is investment. Investment is putting money aside, you know, with the hope that it will grow um, to become bigger. So putting money into an asset that would appreciate. And I mean, I'll try to not, you know, use too much financial terms, but I'll try also not to dumb it down so much, given that people may already have some literacy level. So it all comes back to, you know, buying and selling. You see, my mom sells um, tomatoes and pepper and stuff in the house. So I understand this a, a bit more. When she goes to the market, she buys, you know, the item for, say, you know, five pounds and then when she brings it home to sell she retails it at maybe six pounds mm. so for each item she sells she make an extra pound on it yeah and that's the idea for investment you want to you know buy something cheap and then sell it high mm. but even more there are some things you know that if you hold it for a long time you know you can sell it higher and so it could include you know um, um several things like i think i've got that on the next two slides yeah um Next slide. So, so it could be in the form of you know uh, uh, real estate. We know that the value of properties keep rising. So, assuming you are able to buy a property today and you have to sell it in ten years' time, you know that the value would you know go up, and so you get more on your money. Uh, it could even be other commodities. I know people who buy gold, who buy oil, who buy silver. My mom buys corn, and she buys corn cheap from cheaper places she keeps it for a while and then when corn becomes scarce she sells it at a higher price so that's something people can do but in the investment world the items the commodities the assets that mm -hmm. you can hold you know it's not just corn or gold or oil it could also be real estate it could also be even be holding a share in somebody's company you can you can start a company or you could give your money to somebody that take this money and add it to your business when it becomes yeah. profitable then you pay me some of the interest or when you sell your company you know then you pay me you know the profits that the company has made so i guess that leads us you know stocks and shares yeah. where you buy you hold a share in a company you know because let's face it not all of us have got the time to start our own companies or yeah. haven't got the knowledge to start our own companies. But you can actually give your money to somebody. Well, I once tried giving my money to a friend. To run <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm calculating it in my head. Like, hey. Let's okay. keep this thing. It's, 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 uh, the rest is, you know, the rest is history. Right, so sorry. this was to, you know, help people, you know, why, why do you think people don't invest if, you know, it is, that great you know a way to multiply your money or your resources why are people not investing mm. and i guess you know some of the common reasons are that people feel ah it's too complicated it's risky you know i'm not qualified you know life is too short why do i even invest you know yeah. i should just enjoy it you know i don't have enough money you know yeah. uh, and people think that investing for five years six that's too long they want you know quick money you know quick like money. you know the, the, the email from Gaddafi's second wife, you know. Uh, yes. So people have several reasons why they do not invest. Okay. I hope, you know, people can use the comment section to let us know why they do yeah. not invest and then we can, you know, try to demystify some of those. Yeah. Um, but I guess 
if we are to tackle some of the common ones, mm-hmm. investing is 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 a moral thing to do. The Bible says, you know, for, or the good book says that, you know, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Yes. And and that for me, you know, it doesn't say that a good man leaves an inheritance for their children, but even their children's children. So yeah. two generations afterwards, I mean, yeah. I guess if you are looking for any higher reason to invest, then this is one reason for you to leave something for your children as well as even their children's children. Um, but for me, I invest because let's face it. I mean, I'm a migrant here in the UK. Um, I plan to forget being a migrant. Whatever you are working, sometimes you want to take annual leave of two weeks and you are told, oh no, Shara, this is not a good time. We are, you know, the semester is too hot for you to take annual leave. Sometimes I want to visit Ghana to go see my mom for two weeks just to, you know, see how she's doing. And you are told you can't go at this time. You have to go at that time. So, you know, so it, for me, it is that the liberty, the freedom to be able to, you know, take time off so that if I have enough, if, how much am I being paid a month? Say yeah. $1,000 or a 1000 let's say even £2,000. If I've got an investment that can pay me that amount per month, then it literally means that I don't necessarily have to be tied to a job. And this is possible. And there are other higher reasons. If you want to say, ideally, my ideal world, I want to go to my village to teach children there how to read, how to write. But I cannot do that because that job will not pay me enough to yep. take care of my needs. But if I have my own income sources, if I have an investment that is paying me you know, $2,000 or $3,000 a month, then who cares whether I'm paid, you know, down in Uganda or in Africa. I could go there to do anything. I spoke to this couple who are thinking of starting a church Mm. and they are able to start a church now because they've got, you know, income that pays them enough to take care of themselves so that they are starting a church because they love the Lord and want to do more of his work, not because a church is good business. They Mm. really don't care whether they make money from it or not. And then they understand that starting a church is going to take a long time before it starts even making money. But Mm -hmm. they are able to do the things they love, pursue the dreams they have always dreamt of because they have investments that is paying them enough, you know, to do the things that they are doing. So I guess, in you know, in simple terms, it's to be financially free, to own my time, to free some of my time, you know, um, and, and to be happy, I mean, there are those who say that you know riches doesn't make you happy, but if you've got up to a particular amount, it can it can help. <laughs> you know, make me happy, make me rich. I'll be happy, very very happy. Uh, yeah. Tell me yeah. about this um, image with two nice gentlemen standing there. I mean, I guess if you were to ask the typical person from our village or from my village, who they think between these two people who is rich, um, one way you know the, the, the $65 watch, you know, the $400 shoe and all of that. Yeah. Um, when people are investing, they th- some people think that the, the guy on the left is the aspiration. Okay. If you can reach there, that's fine. But it is simply to show that wealth is not what you wear on yourself. Okay. Wealth is actually the asset you hold. See this guy, uh, Zuckerberg, the Facebook guy. <laughs> for a long time, he was always wearing, you know, um, shorts, uh, a, a black shirt, that simple t-shirt. You know, you know, yeah. you know. Or even the was the Bezos guy. You know, they are often not wearing anything too complicated, and you know, but they hold, you know, millions in assets and all of that. Even Elon Musk, our cousin from yeah. South Africa, you know. Yeah. He's oh, got, he's you your know, cousin. Eh? Okay, I didn't know oh, that. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I've seen a picture uh, in your family. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh, that's amazing. That's <laughs> actually really good. Talk to us about some of the strategies. Hey, look at how the time is going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to just kill it. Up. Yeah. So, uh, in terms of, there are so many things you can invest in. Like I've said, mm-hmm. you know, there are people who invest in gold, oil, stocks, and shares, and all of that. But what investment strategy you adopt or what you choose to invest in depends on a few things. How soon do you want your money? 
and you know how much do you have to invest i guess you know but for me mostly is you know yeah these two things how much do you have to invest and how long do you want to invest it for or even the purpose for which you are investing can also dictate where you invest your money in if i'm investing for a holiday in the next half year in the next six months where i put the money for that will be different from where i'm investing my pension which will obviously be for the next you know 30 years or you know assuming that i'm 30 <laughs> without you know without giving so much of myself out there oh, so, no worries <laughs> this influences you know where or what items or what assets that you buy and i'll just jump straight into to talk about um a few things people can invest in the first thing obviously you want to invest in is in yourself there is this analogy given of the golden egg if you have a poultry farm and you've got an uh, you know a chicken that all the chickens are laying brown eggs and white eggs but you've got one particular chicken you know that lays a golden egg for which when you sell you know it's gold you know what do you think is your greatest asset in that poultry farm let me kill it it's not the egg it is the chicken that is laying that egg you are your greatest investment you are you know you have the highest any potential for yourself so above all things you want to invest in yourself and joining this you know conversation listening to dr g or even subscribing to my youtube channel you know all of these are ways by which you can you know equip yourself and g let me say this i have learned that true investing in yourself is not actually what we often learn in university it is actually the things that you take the pain to actually pursue to study okay. So that, I mean, I, I studied, we studied till a PhD level. In none of the classes that I took was I taught how to manage your money and how to do any of that. I don't know whether you learned that in university. Please, you know. no. <laughs> <laughs> I did not learn that. But it is after university when I've got the literacy skills to read, to be critical, to understand what I'm reading, that I actually invested in buying the right books, you know, like whether Richest Man in Babylon, you know, uh, the psychology of money, uh, you know, rich dad, poor dad. It is when I started reading these books that, you know, the my my uh, mind opened to understanding money because money in itself is a subject that ought to be studied. So the point here is this, that you need to invest in yourself and it includes gaining financial literacy as well as gaining, you know, high paying skills. If you feel you, your job doesn't pay well enough, get another job or get another you know skill that would you know help you to earn more you know so invest in yourself and those are you know yeah, there are several things you can study i've got here whether coding data analysis project management start a youtube channel start a side hustle invest in yourself do something that would help you earn you know an extra income um all right that said so that said one of the things or one of the assets or one of the commodities you can invest in is what is known as stocks and shares. Okay. Stocks and shares. And stocks and shares simply refers to some, you know, you don't want to start your own business. Somebody has already started their business and you want to give them some money so that they put in their business. And there are thriving companies like Apple, Google, YouTube, you know, YouTube is owned by Google anyway. Um, Tesla, you know, there are companies that are doing well already and they are making profit. So sometimes you just need to align yourself with a thriving company, you know, partnering with them rather than starting your own company, which can be great if, you know, you've got a viable idea and you're going to make profit. Fantastic. But otherwise, you can actually invest in some of these established companies and then whenever they make profits, they pay you dividends. Yeah. And also when the company does well and they sell it, or you can even sell your share of the company, it sells at a higher price and you make profits. So essentially it is owing, owing a bit of a company. Yeah. And I was going to say this, I've got an Apple phone, I've got an Apple computer, you know, I've got a few products that I use all the time. Here in the UK, there's a, you know, a coffee shop called Cafinero, like your Starbucks, I guess. Starbucks is a joke if you taste caffeinero, man. It's so good. 
you know, really? I'm, I'm biased. I'm biased. I know I'm really? biased. I'm biased. I know I'm biased. Okay, we will yeah. get that. Don't worry. <laughs> for, for, for me, for the things that I use, that I know that these are good stuff, the shop that I shop from, mm. apart from giving them money to make profits, I also invest in it so that if mm. Apple is making profits, the profit is shared to their shareholders. I'm also a shareholder. So I'm not just, you know, a, a, a consumer of a, a Apple products. I'm a shareholder. So this is a company affair, you know, and, and that is the mindset that I, I, the Bible says that you will be the head and not the tail. What does yeah. that mean? To be an owner, to be, you know, ownership is key to everything. Yeah. You know, if you want to build wealth, then you must own a product. If you don't own a product, it's going to take a very long time to, you know, you need to own a product and you don't necessarily have to have your own product. You can align yourself with somebody or a product and by, you know, by investing in it, you can make profits. And that's what Shaquille O'Neal did. When Google was starting in the beginning, they pitched the idea to him. He invested a lot of money and now Google is, you know, worth billions and tr Google is worth trillions. What am I saying? It's worth <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so when yeah. the profits, when he sells his share of, when he sells his share of Google, he's got bare money, you know. And yeah. so the company's making profit and they pay him dividends. So yeah. that is what you can do. But let me just interject there again. Sometimes knowing which company to invest in can be a tricky thing. So thank you for sharing that. That's my YouTube. I've got a video on, you know, how to get into stocks and shares. And you should definitely look it up on my YouTube channel. Selecting which company to invest in can be tricky. So there is something called funds. A fund simply means a collection of companies. Because me, my money is only $100, you see. And so I don't know which. Do I invest it in Apple or do I invest it in Google? Or do I invest it in Starbucks? Or do I invest it? Choosing where to invest the money can be a difficult thing, especially when you don't have a lot of money like Shaquille O'Neal. So what you can do is to invest in what is known as funds. Yeah. A fund is simply a collection of companies, a collection of stocks. So then if you put $100 there, a bit of that money is invested in Gucci. A bit of this invested in... Uh, do you know who the richest man in the world at the moment is? I do not. It is, he's, called, he's the French guy, Arnold something something, the guy who runs, who owns the Versace brands and all those brands. In fact, I'm going to Google. Do you see yeah. what we use Google for? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So he's the richest guy at the moment. So it means that his company is doing well at the moment. But maybe you don't even know about it. So when you invest in funds, there are people, smarter people, you know, for lack of a better word, who have put together these companies. So when you put your money in the funds, the money is spread across all these companies. Um, so when I so I invest in something called S&P 500, which is the top 500 companies in America. So mm -hmm. if I put $100 there, a bit of it is invested in Google. A bit of it is invested in Apple. A bit of it is invested in Versace. A bit in Johnson & Johnson. A bit in oil and gas companies. A bit. So essentially, it is a smarter way of investing in so many places. A bit in Tesla. A bit here. A bit there. And that really helps. And, and it's really good for beginners, you see, because instead of putting your money in a company which may not do well, um, this is a, an easy way to put your money in a lot of companies and uh, 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 and chances are that they do better <laughs> they do better in the long term you know than other selecting the individual companies yeah doc how about investment and savings because you know some people may wonder why should why invest or if i save my money won't i get the same kind of return um, so you, I, you shared the slide for the S&P 500 performance. This so, one. no, there's another one, uh, two slides back. Uh -huh. Yes, this, yeah, yeah. So this would actually, can, can I steal a, a minute? Of course. Give me a minute. Yeah. Well, thriving friends, thank you for joining us. 
Um, if you are now joining, wherever you are joining us from, please, we are discussing Financial Literacy 101. And we are talking about investment opportunities for beginners. You may be an expert. If you're an expert, please go ahead and share some ideas with us. The rest of us, we are learning. We are still young and we are learning. So, um, Doc, you are back. Yeah. So, um, so I was saying that th that slide, what it shows is that if somebody had put $10,000 in, say, 10 years ago, and they were to take it out at the end of, you know, 10 years. Okay. This, would, this shows you how much it would have performed, you see. Um, and the numbers work that investing it in the long term is a lot better than um, saving it. Because I don't know how much you guys get in America, but here in the UK, the best rate in savings you can get now is about 4.5%. Mm. But that is because of the you know crazy times we are in. But hitherto, okay. you were getting like 1% or 0.5%. You know, uh, but S&P 500 in the last you know few years have performed about 8% or even 6 to 8%. Okay. So that obviously, you know, is better than um, than than saving for 4% for, for, for or something. Um, okay. but, but in this environment, it depends on how soon do you need the money. For okay. these stocks and shares, mm -hmm. you have to do it for a long time before you get the, the benefit because that's when it compounds. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to saving, that's usually for short term. Okay. So my rule of thumb is this, that if you don't mind keeping the money for five years or more, invest it. But okay. if you think you will need the money sooner, then maybe you should consider saving. So if you are thinking of buying a house in, in, in two years, next year, save the money because investments can go up and down which you must remember but we know from historical data that mm -hmm. if you keep it for the long time it performs better mm -hmm. but if you don't have the patience to wait then you want to save mm -hmm. but, and you can do both at the same time you see that's the beauty so while i'm saving to buy a house i'm also investing small small on the side on the side yeah and doc do you see the question on the screen Um, would you, so the person is asking whether, uh, given the current performance, yeah. if you can share the, share the, uh, the previous slide, I'll show you something. Which one is that? The one on the stocks rising yeah. and falling? Yeah. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So. What we see is that... So let me read the question so that mm -hmm. those who are listening and watching can get the question. It said, based on your experience in the past years, would you recommend investing in stocks given that many companies are reporting losses and laying off workers? I think this is a beautiful question, Isaac. Thank you. So we can see... So see the, the part about uh, May 2020. That was when COVID happened. Yeah. It went down. You can see that I don't know whether you've got uh, something you can show people. Whether is there a way you can highlight that part or something? Please, my 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 technology lesson has <laughs> <been at> that <laughs> point. All right. <laughs> uh, um, so we know that you know stock prices go up and down. Yeah. But in the long term, we can see that it it looks like it's rising. It's rising in the long time. There are ups and downs. You know. Yeah. So this may be a down moment. So yeah. what do I do? I guess there are two strategies. There are those who say that they are waiting for the stock prices to drop now. So mm. now that the stock prices are low, they buy a lot more. Okay. Because can you imagine? My mom sells, you know, corn. So if every time she's buying the corn for, say, $10, you know, or $100 per bag, and now it's selling for $80 per bag, this is the time to buy a lot more because yeah. it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. So that when the prices come back to normal, you sell and you make a lot more profit. I see. So there are those who are now capitalizing on the time now. But we know that it will rise again. You know, the value will come back up. So you keep it and when it comes back up, you sell and you make your profit. Likewise for stocks, now that it's low, you buy and then you sell when it's high. Mm. But there's also what is known as dollar cost averaging. Maybe you are not as smart as other people, you know, to know, when are prices low or would it go yeah. lower again? Yeah. What is the best time to buy? I really don't bother my head with all of that. <laughs> no yeah. matter what, I buy my $100, $200, $1,000. I just buy. 
when it's up, I buy. When it's low, I buy. Because I know that I'm not selling tomorrow. I'm selling in 10 years' time. Yeah. So no matter how much I bought it today, in 10 years' time when I'm selling, it will sell more than I've bought it today. So there are two strategies. What is known as time in the market and in timing the market. There are those who are just waiting for time in the market. They are selling in five years, in 10 years. So they don't care what the price is today. They just buy because they know that in five years, the price should be higher. And there are those who are timing the market. These are the smarter guys who are waiting. When the price goes low, they buy. And mm. then when it comes up, they sell. Mm. You can be lucky with that. But if you're not lucky, the price will go low and it will go low again. And because mm. you are in a, in a hurry, you can't wait for the price to come up and then you sell lower than you bought. And then you would have lost. lost. So you only, in fact, he started, you don't lose until you sell. You see, mm. you, you don't lost, you know. If you bought it today for 100 and tomorrow you're selling for 80, you've not lost. You are still in the game. You only lose when you sell lower than you bought it. So, okay. I mean. Okay, makes sense. But um, I'm, I'm pretty sure there are some people going like, oh, this is blowing my mind. I'm not ready for stock market investment and all that. So I see that you have some other ideas to share with us. And I can't believe it's already 40th minute. So we got to be wrapping up soon. Mm -hmm. Um, so these are other side. In fact, I would encourage people to go to my YouTube channel. There are so many ideas I've shared there. You know, that's why I raise investments. Do subscribe and do let me know if you've come from, you know, Dr. G's, you know, uh, channel. Let me know that you've come from there. Um, so there are, you can only invest money that you have. So that previous slide was just to help people know which, you know, other ideas they can invest in, you know, and they will depend on your environment. I mean, I do a bit of property investment, you know, because I live in a university community, you know. So if you have a place you rent out, you can make some profits. Um, so that can be good. Um, but if you also have internet, wherever you are and you're watching us, it means you can start a blog. Maybe you're passionate about something, passionate about weaving, passionate about something. You can start a podcast, a blog, a YouTube channel. You can even buy a vending machine. This morning, a friend was telling me of, you know, a colleague who, is into vending machines. And gee, I did not know about that. Yeah. But man, it looks like he's making bare money in that. Yeah. What does he do? He doesn't even do it. He just buys the vending machine. It's installed at the stage train stations. Okay. And every time you buy water, he gets his profit. When you buy Coca-Cola, mm. you know, mm. that's all he does. And he's installed a few of them. And it's making good money, you see. Yeah. So there are several ideas you can do. Yeah, uh, uh, I mean, if you have knowledge, you know, that you want to share, you can do consulting yeah. and, you know, these are really good ideas out there. Um, yeah. And then the people in Ghana, other African countries don't feel like you have to have dollars to be able to do something. Um, people are skilled. People are drawing. I'm paying so much for illustration because somebody skilled at that and getting book illustrated is not cheap or it's not cheap at all, dog. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but so what can you do? What can you do? What skill do you have? Can you talk? If you can talk, can you look for opportunities that are related to talking? I sometimes do MC. And I charge sometimes oh, to be an MC for people. You know? see, oh, I didn't know that one. Yeah. Hey, I see. Well, uh, can you think of any other ideas, people who may not have money to start? investing in or to just start a business <sighs> and gee see i have sold my you know i i used to have like three bicycles i sold two of them okay. you can start from you know you have if i have a cloth or shoe that i've not worn in my time lifespan is one one year if i've not worn it in a year it means i don't need it it's good I sell it. i'm in trouble okay yeah, i sell it on facebook marketplace and there are some people I live with who's, who can't find their shoes because I've sold them, you know. Because if I, if th this video will put me in trouble because they'll find out that, you know, all the things they can't find has been sold, you know. Okay. I mean, I remember when I moved in with my wife, you know, I had my own stuff and then she had her stuff. But when we came together, we have like three chopping boards. We have two ladles. We have seven knives. What do we do with that? Just put them all on Facebook Marketplace. Okay. Sell the ones we don't need. And, you know, some of them we gift it. Sometimes we sell it, you know. And those are ways you can generate 
money, you know. And once you have that money, you can save it somewhere. You can invest it somewhere. There are times, you know, I've asked friends, you know, that, oh, Charlie, I've got some time. What do you need done? Your painting. If I can help you paint, just pay for my lunch or something. There are so many things you can commercialize. You can, mm. any skill that you have, mm. you know. I've got friends who help me design a flyer. They charge me for it and I pay them for it, you know. Mm. And uh, when they come, they shout out, can you proofread my, you know, my dissertation for me? I'm like, well, it will cost me maybe to take me like three hours to do this. Mm. You have to pay me for half of my time, you know. Mm. And they pay, pay me 20 pounds, 30 pounds. And hey. I mean, I, I guess, you know, of course, there are those you can do for free, but yeah. there are those, yeah. I mean, that who will pay you for your service also. And yeah. we must learn to commercialize our skill, you know, yeah. if you are confident that what you, the service you are delivering is worth it, people will yeah. pay for it. Yeah, you know? I will pay for really good food. If I can get somebody who can cook some of the traditional Ghanaian meals and I don't have to spend that five hours cooking, I will pay no, for no. it any day, no, no, any no. time. And then I'll use the time for something else. So I've actually paid so, someone to make me a Tanzanian meal because, you know, I tried some, you know, ugali and, you know, some oh, I food. And I, I liked it, but I don't want to go buy the whole flour of ugali to come out. I just want to eat it once. So yeah. I had a friend I was like, you know, I'll pay you to cook it for me. And then, so... Yeah. These are things you can do. Yeah, and I also pay for my hair to be done. I've tried several nail salons that I don't like. If I found somebody I love, I'll... you know, there are several things we are willing to pay money for. Just mm -hmm. think about what you have and what you can do. Babysitting. Um, right now, you just gave me a wonderful idea. My husband has shoes that I can sell, so <laughs> I hope he's not watching. When the shoes go missing, he should check Facebook mm -hmm. Marketplace. I'm not selling mm. mine. I'm selling only his. <laughs> Wonderful. Mm. Do you have final ideas to share with us? We are on the 46th minutes. I see so many thriving friends joining from Facebook, from YouTube. Uncle Sam, thank you so much for joining. Isaac, Frederick. Um, when you join from LinkedIn, I can see, but from Facebook, if I'm using the computer, I can see exactly who. So I know you are there. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining us. We are talking about financial literacy. This is just one of the many, many, many series we are bringing your way. So please please, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel yet, I don't know what you are waiting for, but kindly go to Thriving Generation with Dr. G and subscribe. Also consider going on YouTube right now to subscribe to Dr. Shadrach's um, channel, Diaspora Careers and Investment. I learn a lot from that channel. There are very few channels that I, I subscribe to. Okay, I will watch some things one, two here and there, but this is one of the things that I really, really subscribe to. So I recommend. Doc was going to share some final ideas or words or encouragement because he's 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 on the lead becoming yeah. rich and we are following. So please insha inshallah. Insha hey. <laughs> no. <that> <laughs> no, so I was just gonna say that you know thanks for this opportunity and for friends you know who want to you know start this journey I strongly encourage you to it may be scary to begin with but once you start you know you are good. You can start with $50, $20. Start investing from, and you only get better by doing. Um, I wish I knew this a lot, you know, longer. And that's why my YouTube channel is there. G is also sharing these things. Do get some knowledge and then do start. I've got a step-by-step -step guide on my YouTube channel, which will guide you as to which platform to use, how to start it, and these would really help you. So thank you very much, G, for the opportunity. And um, um, I look forward to, you know, making new friends and new subscribers from the American continent. And hey. yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah um, I see that you like his ideas. So go and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, thank you very much. And I guess, uh, is that me done or? Oh, you can hold on for a second. Um, uh, I mean, we have to leave. 
um, live streaming because we are thriving friends who work and it's a working day. So people have to get to their other um, jobs. But if you have questions, please, you can go ahead and post it here or you can go on his YouTube channel. You can reach out to him directly depending on what you need. I do appreciate you. I like your ideas. I have been watching your videos. I just saw the recent, I, probably that may not be the most recent, but you said you need debt, but <laughs> I, there you did an excellent job talking about balancing your debt and your credit that mm -hmm. is beautiful so please if you live anywhere you are considering improving on your financial literacy start from there and then continue to build on it i as always i do appreciate you all thank you so much for joining if you have further questions please post them and do share if you don't share other thriving friends wouldn't know that we are learning awesome things we are going to be rich right we are going to thrive but we don't want to be the only people up there and then looking down on everybody and they are requesting for all kinds of things from us we want to thrive together we want to go with them so share 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 like the video share the video invite other people to also learn with us we appreciate you we love you thank you for your support and we'll see you same time next week bye